Hey YouTube land, it's Tychandrus there doing another action figure review and today we're having a look at a Star Wars Black Series figure and this is one of the characters from the Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi show and his name is One Jack, One, yeah, from what it looks like it is One Jack um, so there's, an, we'll go through the box first so it's the kind of standard clamshell uh, packaging with the kind of cardboard on the outside if you open one side you, the whole thing just slides out and you can take the figure out you have an image of the character here now what's interesting i can see like from what i can see that looks like there's some clone images or it's or not clone images but uh there's at least a clone trooper shoulder here on one side and i'm not too sure who's this is on this side it could be one of the um i think it could be the fifth brothers or the it could be um Reva's uh, third sister armor. Uh, I know there were a couple of figures released in the same wave, and I think if you have all the figures, they kind of stack together nicely on side by side and create a kind of image. But I can't remember who else was released in this wave that would, you know, combine together. So you have the Obi Wan Kenobi is set years after the dramatic events of Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith, where Kenobi face where. Kenobi faced the corruption of his friend and Jedi apprentice Anakin Skywalker turned Sith Lord Darth Vader and then it's just repeated. There's nothing really about this character in particular. Um, the only thing I remember about him, I, I did watch the series, the only thing I remember about him is I think he's like a bounty hunter or a droid that was sent to capture Kenobi. And you see him on screen for maybe a couple of minutes. I don't think he's even on screen. He's only, I think he's only in one episode. I don't think he turns up more than once and he's only on screen for a little bit and then he you never see or hear from him again. So now I'm the reason I picked up this guy is because I'm a sucker for droids from the Star Wars universe. Usually if there's anything with a droid in it, I'll try and pick it up. And this guy's no exception. So for the most part, you can even see where I'm going with this. He is exactly just a slight modified retool of this guy. And this is Forlom from the Empire Strikes Back scene where they have all the bounty hunters on board. Is it the Venator? Is that the name of the ship or the Executioner? It's Vader's um, Star Destroyer. And you have that iconic scene from the Star Wars universe where it's like, Bounty Hunters, we don't need that kind of scum. And you kind of pan across all the different Bounty Hunters that they hired. And what this guy is amongst them. How he's called either Forlom or, if you want to get technical, he's also called Zuckus. Because back in the day when Kenner were releasing the figures, uh, they got either, either they got the names mixed up. It's, an, it's a long-going historic issue where this guy... This bug-headed alien and this also bug-headed alien had a mix-up with either mix-up with their names or if you're if you want to they didn't mix up the name and this alien droid looking guy is called Zuckus and the bug creature guy is called Forlom but to me Forlom is more of a droid designation than an actual bug dude and Zuckus seems to fit the bill more for that so for an alien creature dude or alien creature guy so we have three versions of this figure now pretty much so if you just get him to stand just move his little legs over here so this is the original release version that was released i think it was similar packaging but it was the single card release the two on the back even though the cards were a individual card the light tan version or the light beige version of Z uh, Forlom or Zuckus and this r silver dry burst version of Zuckus were part of a Kenner homage two pack set. So you had them um, basically a homage to the original um, Kenner style screw up where this guy was called Zuckus and this guy's called Forlom and I did a review for them. So if I can dig out that review, I'll put a link to it in the description. But this is the guy that we're looking at today. So he has a very clean look to him compared to the kind of rusted orange 
kind of look of this guy. The heads are very similar though. They have this kind of translucent um, green plastic that they, I think the whole head is made out of, but it's painted over. You can see it more on this guy's head now that you can see the kind of eyes, the bug eyes kind of going through it. This guy still has the same feature. The silver for the heads are actually slightly different. This is a more kind of darker gunmetal. This is kind of a more metal look. So you do have that. This bandolier piece is new. And then the only other new thing for this guy is these double blasters that he has. Now, it is the one thing I think is a bit of a shame on this guy. And it is a bone of contention for me for this figure. I absolutely love this figure because it is a droid and I like droid figures. Like case in point, uh, here is the original IG-88 from the that same bounty hunter scene. And then we got a IG-11 who is exactly the same as IG-88, I think. From what I heard, and I don't know if those rumours are true, but there was something about not being able to use the classic character names from for Star Wars characters. So guys like Forlom, they w weren't allowed to use those names. I don't know if it's true or not. It could be complete hogwash, or complete kind of bullcrap. Call it what you will. But I think like some of the characters that have turned up that have been from previous films, like especially stuff like droids, have been redesignated with different numbers or different names. Case in point, this guy is the one Jack. Um, so it, take it what you will. It is possible that they are not allowed to use some of the similar names. So IG-88 became IG-11. This Forlorn became this guy. And there was the Jabba's Palace torturer droid called 88. Got an actual name, which I can't remember, from the uh, Book of Boba Fett series. So, and I hope, I am hoping we get a Black Series figure for him. Or, and a updated black or an updated vintage collection for er, for him as well because he is long 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 overdue a figure and he's such a cool design that weird kind of skeletal robot thing so anyway articulation on this guy if you have this one it's pretty much exactly the same so arms rotate you have a swivel swivel here at the upper bicep the arms do hinge out and back but not very much because of this rotation piece you have a single jointed elbow, but it's very limited and be very careful with this pipe piece here. Um, I actually have a 3PO, which reuses re the same hands or same arms, and it tends to snap if you over force it. You don't really get much in the way of movement on this arm, these arms. His arms or his hands can swivel. He does have a hinge up and down, and he has a hinge in and out. Now, this is my one, one minor nitpick with this figure they did reuse the mold they did give him i'm not sure if it's an added yeah it's a glued on piece so this um what were they called restraining bolt as far as i can tell is glued onto the arm here that's also a new piece added these holsters are new and they're added uh you have waist swivel as well so you don't get much waist swivel but you do get it and the legs can kind of kick forward move forward that much there's not much movement in the legs because of the design uh, it's similar with art uh, with Tripio. his legs kind of kick out a bit but it kind of off goes off the side you have a single jointed knee and you have rocker ankles and you have peg holes on the bottom of the feet my one one major minor whichever way you want to call it gripe is his left hand because he's, he's supposed to dual wield pistols it would have been so much cooler if they actually rent that extra mile and actually gave him a trigger finger hand for this side because he has a trigger finger right hand he doesn't have a trigger finger left and when you're putting the pistol which has a trigger guard on it into this hand he has to hold it like this because they didn't bother to actually give him a trigger finger hand which is a bloody shame and it's really annoying and then the only other added extra piece is this bandolier that's molded to fit over him at this angle so overall he's a pretty cool figure if you're a fan of droids he looks really cool i'm going to bring in another droid which is this guy which is from the mando series it was season two i believe he propped up in he's the guy that's voiced by richard adol adelaide adolaide 
I know I'm butchering that name, but the guy from IT Crowd, Moss from IT Crowd, he has a really cool droid character. I can't remember the designation for him, but he looks pretty cool with all these bounty hunter droids. Overall, as I said, he's a cool figure. Um, I do recommend get, picking him up, but yeah, like me, you probably will be a pretty miffed with that one oversight well it's not an oversight they, it's deliberate they didn't want to make an extra uh, re-sculpt a hand with a trigger finger on hand or trigger finger on it for the other pistol it's just such a shame that they didn't it would have been made the character just that little bit extra so there you go guys hope you enjoyed this quick review for i jack and as always i hope you feel free to like comment and subscribe to my channel cheers guys